don't mind it in the background there. Do not mind what's at the background because I have come into your screens for the first time tonight. <sighs> so, WrestleMania 36, night two. Out here. Um... Yeah, I don't know what to tell y'all, but night two was a 2.5 out of 5 for me. Leading me, to, leading me to say that overall, as a whole, WrestleMania was a 6 out of 10. Because I said 3.5 yesterday, 3.5 out of 5, 2.5 tonight. So there you have it. That's how you get 6. You know, do your math. So, you know. Very, very surprising start. Same promo package with Stephanie McMahon and then the, the, the weird promo thing, you know, that started off the event, you know, four, four yeah, four, about four hours ago. Um, now, this event actually went three and a half hours. Was not expecting it to go three and a half hours, but I'll tell you why it did in a moment. Uh, but it started out with the NXT Women's Championship and Charlotte and Rhea Ripley had a nice low matchup, but it actually went pretty long, I'm not going to lie to you. It was very surprising to see this match go first, but you know what? It is what it is. A um, couple bad spots in here, and Charlotte ends up winning anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, so Charlotte is new NXT Women's Champion. Um, I imagine it will either be her dominating NXT for now, because, I mean, you got... You, you, you know, WWE just likes to feed her a championship, you know, like like pretty much all the time. She's won 11 titles now. Um, and it's kind of getting annoying at this point, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so meanwhile, the next matchup on the, on the Night 2 card was Bobby Lashley and Aleister Black. Um, I do not care for Bobby Lashley, nor do I care for Lana. Um, Alistair Black gets to dub anyway. Um, so, yeah. May, yeah, the Bobby Lashley Lana stuff makes me want to cry. Makes me want to cringe. And then Gronk. Gronk comes in. Uh, and we'll talk about Gronk in a minute because, oh, God. We got we got to. But first off, we're going to talk about Dolph Ziggler and the Otis storyline. I did not know, you know, the, um, the whole Otis storyline, you know, um, Sony Deville, Lacey Evans, and all, or not Lacey Evans, uh, what the fuck was her name? I don't, I don't, I don't know, because I don't care, because this is Dolph Ziggler's first singles match at WrestleMania. I do not care anymore, because this man has just been, he's, he's definitely worked his ass off at WWE, and he's just not, this, this type of match where it really does not matter at all, you know, and, and, yeah, and the marks were like, well, well, this is a good outcome for Otis, and then they know his girl. I don't, I just do not care. I really don't. I don't care for this match, and Otis ends up winning anyway. Please get JBL off the commentary, please. Um, the last man standing match. Last man standing match. Boy, was this a brutal match. Very emotional at the end. Edge, you know, jumping off like the little monkey bar thing inside the gym room. Boy, I know gym rats are mad. Um, cameraman also falls down, and it, it ended up being a little bit too long, maybe about 10, 15, 20 minutes too long. But you know what? It works because of that emotional end to that matchup. Um, and that was a good matchup. Um, so yeah. And then, you know, Gronk comes in, you know, a bunch of guys were just, you know, go, coming in and out, you know, talk about the 24-7 the title that Bojo Raleigh has, and then Gronk comes in, goes off of a, um, goes off of a little thing that, 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 that they have set up, and then wins the 24-7 title. It was very obvious if you didn't know from last night. Uh, but you know what? It is what it is. I don't really care. You know, Bronk being a champion, like winning a champion on his second day in the WWE, you know. Um, so, yeah, don't care. 
Street Profits, um, do not really know who they are. Um, I know one of them is like really being hyped up, but we'll have to see if he, um, Montez Ford, I believe. You know, we'll have to see, you know, what he can do if he breaks away from the Street Profits. Now, this was just a match that was kind of mixed together at the last minute because, um, Andrade, the, um, the U.S. champ, wasn't able to come into this event, so, you know, um, didn't really last that long. It was nice and short. Um, so, yeah. And then Bianca Belair comes in at the very end. And then, you know, Titus O'Neil also comes to replace Gronk because Gronk just bounced after winning the 24 7 title. So, Titus O'Neil comes in. Man, am I disappointed with what WWE has done to him, too. Like, this dude should be, like, you know, winning. You know, he, he should be getting elevated, you know, and stuff like that, you know, winning mid-card titles and then, you know, eventually getting elevated to WWE World Championship status. I think he's the type of guy that can do that. I mean, if he could do the stupidest thing ever at, at the um, Royal Rumble way back when, you know, he could he could, he could definitely do something. And it, so, yeah, um, the final Fatal Five way, I honestly don't really care. Did not really care all that much because the ending to it really didn't matter. Um, they, they applied something with Bailey and Sasha. Um, Bailey and Sasha Banks. Nothing came out of it. Nothing came out of it. Lacey Evans was out there, you know. She probably should have been just a triple threat because Tamina is just there. She's been a jobber for years now. Don't know why she's still even in the company. Naomi was just also kind of there. Uh, she's had her opportunities, and she's, you know, I don't think nobody really cares about when when she has the belt all that much, to be completely honest with you. So, um, nothing, nothing, you know, nothing really, you know, just to be, just be like, hmm, well, hmm, right there. But then we get to the real highlight of the night, which was... You know, last night we got a big highlight with the Boneyard match, and we were and I was wondering what in the world the Firefly Funhouse was going to be, and it is a five out of five type of bit, uh, type of thing. Now the actual match really didn't last that long, um, did not last that long. But the way Cena and the way Bray Wyatt did what they did, you know, we got a bunch of stuff. We got ruthless aggression. John Cena, we got the Doctor of Fucking Ops, we got the Golden Boy Cena, we got, you know, the Husky Harris references, you know, old Bray Wyatt with the Sister Abigail thing, you know, the puppets, especially the Vince McMahon puppet, oh my god, the Smackdown Fist, they still have it, why isn't that being used? I do not know why that's not being used, that needs to be used, that is, a, that is freaking iconic, please use that again. And, and, I mean, there's just so much. It's just like, okay, what the hell is going on? NWO Cena. Freaking fantastic. It was great. The whole Hulk Hogan, Bray Wyatt type things also just oozing with just this type of energy. This energy that was just so freaking chaotic, so acid trip, so LSD type stuff. And it was great. I loved it. This segment, this is also going to be a 5 out of 5 type segment. Definitely worth it. And it was also kind of shot in the cinematic style as well. Worth it. Every second of it was worth it. Um, I don't know which one I love more. You know, the Taker, um, AJ Styles thing, or this thing. Because um, this is going to be in my mind for a while. I'm not going to lie to you. And then we have the main event which was Drew McIntyre taking on Brock Lesnar, and it was trash. You know, this, you know, I understand Drew McIntyre ends up winning anyway, but three F5s, four Claymores, and a German suplex by Brock. That was it. That match was like three minutes, tops, four, and that was it. Honestly, Drew McIntyre should have won um, a world championship a decade ago. This man should have won a championship a decade ago. I've been saying it. I'll say it again. He should have won a he should have won a major championship a decade ago when he was first in WWE. It did not make any sense back then. 
it makes you know it makes sense now I, I like it but now it's just like okay we had another Brock reign we had another Brock Lesnar reign who cares about Brock Lesnar at this point I, nobody really does you know he's just kind of there you know winning championships left and right but yeah um, WrestleMania 36 disappointed me a little bit disappointed me a little bit especially night two night two was kind of a drag night one was a little was a much better um showing i think you know some of these matches probably should not have even happened on the show um but you know what it is what it is should have been a one night event it should be a four out of five but because there was so much you know just not on that just not clicking with me not clicking with me personally because, you know, the matches themselves do not matter. Otis versus Ziggler does not matter. The Street Profits match does not matter. Elias does not matter. Um, the Elias Baron Corbin thing. You know, those types of matches did not matter at all in the grand scheme of things. Um, but, you know... And the whole 24-7 title stuff being, you know, with Gronk and everything. Gronk should have just been focused on. They should have just had Gronk host the event, have a good time. You're not doing anything. You're just hosting the event. But no, we had to do all that other stuff. So what even is this timeline? So, yeah, that's going to pretty much do it. Um, as far as other sports goes... Don't really have anything again because there's no sporting events going on, so we don't know what's going to happen. But we will see you Wednesday, though, um, for the Objective Slant live stream. So please stick around for that. Um, and you know, we'll see the WWE again very, very, well, very later down the line, in probably August. Um, whenever SummerSlam is, I assume it will be in August. It will probably be in August. But when SummerSlam hits, we'll be see what's going to happen with that. I'm going to cover that event because this is that's the third major event of the year for the WWE. Um, so, yeah, that's going to pretty much do it. I'll see you guys, you WWE fans, at SummerSlam. We'll see you then. Big Boy Sports is signing out, and we'll see you then. So, yeah. Peace.